This is my oscilloscope with no leads and no signal generator. So we're going to be looking at a nice flat line. Just like everybody looks at their magnets with a nice flat line. This is a magnetic viewing film. This is a neodymium magnet. This is looking at a magnetic waveform. And this is looking at an electric waveform. <clears throat> so a flat line is death, no energy, no pulse. If we spun this like a basketball on your finger, the drill so we can spin this it will still render a flat line so from a 2D perspective that flux is not moving but what science calls a magnetic line of force is actually a ring We can see that line all the way around an object. A line on a globe is only theoretical and becomes a curve in reality. So a magnetic line of force is actually a ring. This flat line is actually looking at a ring but from a certain angle. So we're only seeing a flat line. But it's a ring, and, but this is a ring of energy. So when we are seeing a linear projection on this oscilloscope, we see a dot going from left to right. That would be like seeing an electron orbiting around an atom right at the equator, perfectly. A flat line. But if we have a magnet at an angle inside of a cylinder, we get a variation or a pulse. And discovered something kind of cool here earlier. If you have a magnet that has a flat line and you put it next to this oscilloscope, it's also going to register a flat line and you can see the variation in the flux. So this electric device can measure a magnetic wave. You just turn it off on a flat line, introduce a magnetic wave, and all things electric will respond in kind to the specific wave that this is being produced. So let's see what happens when we have an angled magnet next to the oscilloscope. We can actually measure the distance it takes for the magnetic flux fluctuation of that line we can actually measure that flux and how far it affects that oscilloscope so in essence we can measure the magnetic frequency that an angular magnet is spinning depending on the size of the magnet will equal the note, but it's not an audio frequency, it's a magnetic frequency. It's the negative. Just like we have an entire harmonic chord on the electromagnetic scale, on the magnetoelectric scale, there is also harmonic chords, in which we can create symphonies of magnetism, of interlocking waves. something to think about. Measure the waveform. Measure the waveform. Angled magnet. Flat magnet. 
So for the same amount of energy I put into spinning this, I get zero energy back in the form of magnetism on the magnetoelectric scale. If this was a bigger magnet, it would register a bigger wave exponentially. So let's get a smaller magnet. Spherical magnet. That's a smaller mass, so therefore it creates a smaller wave. But if we magnetized this material, if this was iron, it would have a really small wave. Because this is neodymium, it's registering a much bigger wave, because it's a rare earth material. So the bigger and heavier the material, and the bigger the variation, meaning the larger the angle that the magnet is sitting, will determine the size of the waveform. So if we can find an electric frequency of about the Schumann resonance and see what shape and size and frequency and all that, what it looks like on here, and then find the right size magnet, the right angle, and the right speed to match that electric frequency, I think something funny is going to happen magnetically. Either you're going to have a dramatic loss in weight, or drop in temperature, or both, or uh, an increase in energy, don't know. But something will happen, hopefully all the above. So this is just something to think about. It's amazing what you can find when you just play around with magnets. It doesn't take a physics class to discover things about magnetism. Because you can't learn this in a physics class. Because physics is talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, not the magnetoelectric spectrum. This is electricity. This is magnetricity. Look into Walter Russell, Ed Leeds Skolnan, and Professor John Searle. Thank you.